Prince of Persia only made thirty million dollars this weekend. That's not good. <laughs> but its budget was two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm wow. saying. Its budget it was wasn't it like a huge budgeted movie? Yeah. Well, wow. they had a double whammy going against them. They had a it's a video game that they made a movie out of, and B it's Disney. Disney made uh, pirates. The first one was good. The third one we actually walked out of. We were just like, wow, how many times are we going to reenact the same scene in one movie? Okay, let's go. <laughs> look, it's Johnny Depp pretending to be drunk with a funny accent. Oh, look, it's Johnny Depp pretending to be drunk in a boat. It's Johnny Depp pretending to be drunk in a prison. <laughs> in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> <I like that. sighs> Dude, Alice in Wonderland is still making money. <sighs> There, that that was one that. <sighs> wow, did that make a lot? Three hundred thirty-two million dollars. Yeah, but it took them a long time to get that kind of money, like months. Whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they care as long as they make the money. Yeah, but it, it was really a flop at first, and then it kind of picked up a little bit of steam. Well, wasn't there like a Avatar was out right with that one? Everyone was still wasting their money on Avatar. I shouldn't say wasting their money, though. That movie was entertaining with all the effects. It was just a dumb movie. I watched it last night. It it It's Pocahontas in space. You're right. Yeah, so... told you. It's stupid. It was the most predictable piece of crap ever. The best part's like the last 45 minutes. And that's just because it was funny. Yeah. Like the, the, the mech with the big knife. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> what the hell was that? It's a mech with a big knife. I mean. No, that, it very much was. Hi, I'm a Mac. I have a knife. I'm gonna stab you. But that movie, I didn't. I, you know what? I, 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 I didn't quite get the huge, huge, huge draw of it. Why everyone loved it? Yes. You know why it made one billion dollars or whatever it is. Well, I mean, I, I, that I can understand because you know that was like the big, the first real big 3D movie that actually didn't do it half-assed. Wow, seven hundred and forty-nine million dollars domestic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think they're foreign's much more than domestic. Check yeah, let's look at it. Summary. Domestic, 749. Foreign, 1.9 billion. <laughs> <laughs> billion? What? With a yeah. B? What the f***? <laughs> it made $2.7 billion so far. <laughs> now, what kind of a bonus check would you get if your movies made that much money, Bob? I don't know. I have no idea. I'd probably get it like my salary for the year all at once <laughs> how about a trust fund for like two years and i know i'm probably going to regret saying this but what did how did the train your dragon do pretty good oh okay i was gonna say because that i like that was a good movie it's i enjoyed still in the movie. top 10 in the 10th week of its release it's still number 10 so that's pretty good and overall it made like what 200 million 212 we're hoping to break 215 because that's what kung fu panda made are there any uh Cartoon films coming up. I mean, Shrek just came out. What else is there in the next couple months? Toy Story three. Toy Story three is, I, I, and from people who here who've seen it, says it's awesome. Shrek. I, I'll be honest. I'm not seeing it. It doesn't even look interesting. It just looks kind of dumb, to be honest. Just like, oh, okay, everyone forgets about him. What the hell was the one Christmas movie? It's what it pretty much. Yeah, it's a wonderful Shrek, is what we've been calling it internally. Okay, I think Ivan's not showing up, so let's begin. Welcome to the GamerCast Network video game show. This is episode 196, a.k.a. the underwater episode. With us, we've got Keith. Greetings. We've got Chad. Hello. Bob. Hello. And I am Phil. And this is 196. And Keith, why are we the underwater episode now? Um, I think we were drowning... Ivan's baby. Oh, okay. Just checking. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I just felt like the right thing to say at the moment. I mean, last week was the Powdered Toast episode that seems to follow suit. Powdered Toast into underwater to wash it off. When did we decree it was the Powdered Toast episode? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I said it at some point in the show that it was the Powdered Toast episode. So it therefore became the Powdered Toast episode. This week on the GamerCast Network, 
Episode 103 of the Post Game Report will not talk about the Lost Series finale for the entire show. On Achievement Junkie Episode 106, Why Are Some Games So Hard? The epic 100th episode of the Sarcastic Gamer Blue Show may be the raunchiest episode yet. Have your earmuffs ready and tune in next week for a more Disney-friendly episode. Discover the community that brings you all these great podcasts and more at GamerCastNetwork.com. Okay, first topic. Keith, run with your uh, Jack the Ripper and Shock Holmes. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't even plan on getting this. Um, <clears throat> I was just, I got Gamefly and I was looking through the games and apparently I rented Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Which actually is, we're having fun with. Sue and I have been pretty much going through playing it. Um, you're obviously Sherlock Holmes and you run around with, uh, you know, your ever-present and horrible husband... Watson, because the whole the whole movie the whole game they keep saying how he's married and they wish his wife luck, but like they have the times on the game the whole time, and if he's married, he never goes home. He's always with Sherlock Holmes, always. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but anyway, you're you're trying to track down and, and decipher the identity of Jack the Ripper. I've been enjoying it. It's clearly a game that has once you, you're going to play through it once, and that's going to be the end of it, because. Uh, the puzzles, once you figure them out, they're, they're, you're done with them. But the puzzles themselves, we've actually really been enjoying. They don't really give you a lot in guidance as to what you're supposed to do. You just really have to kind of play around with it and figure it out. So they have like, you know, the basic number puzzles where you got to unlock things and, and, and figure it out with number combinations. They got, um, remember Wetrix where you had to build the pipes to get the stuff like that, but you also have to, you know, they have things like that where you have to figure out what gas lines uh, and where the live gas is to weld stuff. You know, just all kinds of different things where you have to have the right combination of jiggle this, jiggle that, and then, okay, well, I'll get there. <laughs> just like an evening with the girlfriend. Jiggle this, jiggle that. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, toggle this thing on. Okay, now test it. Is this the right pressure? No. Okay, let's go. Right, different combination of thumb. Huh. Yeah, I guess when I say it like that. Huh. Yeah. Did you jiggle it with the right pressure? <laughs> I eventually did. If it's just right, it's good. If it's too much, it turns into a bad time. Exactly. There are flame happens when you jiggle it just right. But, uh, you know, it's got all the pretty much the standard puzzles. Go around, gather all the pieces, put them together, build a ladder. Now you can get into the room, that kind of thing. It's very, uh, it's an adventure game, like the old King's Quest or Shadowgate or that kind of thing. But they do have a couple things that I thought were really cool as opposed to the other puzzle games. They have, like... Uh, the murder reenactments that you have to do. And that's where you're trying to determine different facts about Jack the Ripper. So, you know, as you're looking around the crime scene, okay, there's blood 12 inches off the ground. Uh, so splattered on the wall for one scene, and the, there's no blood on the wall for the other scenes. That means the second chick was killed, you know, was stabbed while she was alive, and it was the knife that killed her versus the other one who was strangled to death. And you have to piece all the things together and you know, there's a bruise on her left cheek and her right jawbone, so, and her tongue was swollen, so he covered her mouth with the left hand and strangled her with the right, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's actually pretty cool. We've been having fun with that, trying to figure out the different combo. Now, the one thing <coughs> with this and all of the puzzles and everything is you really can just kind of mix and match until you get the right one. It's not like... If you get it wrong, if you get it wrong, you just can't continue until you get it right. But it's it's still pretty cool. And then also they have these deduction and motive boards that, based upon all the facts you gather from the murder reenactments, you have to build possible conclusions. So, you know, again, based upon the fact that there was a, a bruise on her right cheek and on her left jawbone, uh, you can and then he, you know, you can assume that he was right-handed because he was covering her mouth with the left hand and strangling her with the right. So you come up with all these things to get the deduction. It's just, it was just kind of cool to do all that. <coughs> we had a good time with all that stuff. Um, I'm, I don't know how far I'm in. I mean, going off of the real Jack the Ripper, he what, he killed five girls? Well, I think he killed five and they just killed, I'm up to the fourth chick that's been killed. So I'm assuming... I'm nearing the end. But the uh, the bad parts of the game, the controls are rancid. You you have the choice to either run around in third person or first person. First person is easy to move around in, uh, but you can't see. Shit. Third person, you can see everything, but you can't move around because it's one of those, you know how when it switches zones, it like kind of reloads the camera? You know what I'm talking about? 
Uh, except if you're holding up to move to the next zone, when it switches camera, you're now in a zone where you have to hold down to go. So if you continue holding up, you just run back into the same... It's just... It was bad. Trying to interact with stuff... Um, if you're in first person, you just hit the button and it does it. If you're in third person, you have to go to this little magic spot. And that once you're in that spot, then you can interact what it is. And if something's blocking the magic spot, your guy kind of just has like a seizure trying to get, <laughs> get to the to magic it. spot again, like an evening with the. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really either run around in third person where the controls are hard to move anywhere or run around in first person where you can move, but you can't see anything. But Again, it just makes me laugh because I just picture it, all right, so your your dude's standing there and here comes Sherlock Holmes, the greatest detective ever, and you're in first person mode. So he's looking up into the sky, now looking at his feet. Now he's just bobbing <laughs> he's bobbing his head up and down until he can finally focus in on the object. I mean he just would look like some kind of schizophrenic loon if you were watching him try to do that. So it's just you know. And then the graphics are not not good at all. I had to check to see how old the game was, and it only came out last year. The graphics are horrible for a game that came out last year. I thought they weren't all over the top for a game that would have came out initially. But, and uh, the audio is also kind of funny. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is, is voiced by, it sounds like Stewie Griffin, if he were just, you know, in his 20s. <laughs> you know how, just the way he accents all the words, Stewie Griffin, it's the exact same way Sherlock Holmes speaks. And then the Russian guys, or, or I shouldn't say the Russian guys, the Jewish guys, you have to go into a little Jewish corner. The Jewish guys are funny because they're just like, you know, hey, where's my bread? <laughs> like that's their voice, that kind of thing. <laughs> I'm going to watch this cat over here. It, it's just, it's, it's just fun. <laughs> the voice acting isn't really that good. But, uh, Sue and I have been kind of running through it together and, and been playing it, and it's fun, but the controls are so bad. They're just so bad. It's, a, it's annoyingly bad. But uh, I would give it probably like a 6.5 out of 10. Again, you can't, you can't, don't buy it, don't waste your time, because once you figure the stuff out, it's the same again. Uh, but if you like the adventure games and those kind of uh, you know, I need to pick up this this poker to. Why do I have to say poker? Everything that I'm saying. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick up a hammer and these nails to build a, a ladder to climb up to the the window to rip the board off to get into the house. You know that kind of thing. So it's all very based upon. Once you do this, then you can move on to the next piece. But if you like those adventure kind of games, it's worth renting. Uh, like I said, we're having a good time with it. It's just the controls are not are not that swift. Moving on. Keith, you also sent out a topic that Tweet Defense is out in HD, I guess this is for the iPad. Yes, yes, that's all. It was just really more of an announcement than anything. Tweet Defense is out uh, for HD, I want to say... It said $8 in the thing. Yeah, here. 8 bucks for the HD version. I haven't checked. I haven't been on the iTunes store to look. I don't, again, I don't own an iPod, I, you know. Yeah, they don't have anything on the official site yet. I was looking for it, I didn't see it. On the Tweet Defense site? Correct. Well, anyway... Chris was the one that said that told me that they they were doing that were they were releasing it in HD. So I wanted to throw that out there to uh, if you don't have it, go pick it up. Tweet the fence in HD. And if it's not there, keep an eye out for it. Last topic you sent in, Keith, was the uh, Chinese suicides. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just found that funny. I know that uh, <laughs> I find suicide funny. <laughs> I know that. Um, Ivan was saying, you know, that they make other things as well, yes. But that same company, because we discussed that story before. Uh, yeah, but people are just killing themselves like crazy in this company. They actually just had a guy tried to kill himself, I think, uh, on Thursday. Tried to slit his wrists in the, in the dormitory rooms. Now, you said this company makes... What the iPhone uh, devices for? Yeah, they make stuff. They also make stuff for Sony and um, a couple other companies. Yeah, these are these are the assembly plants. The factories actually put the things together. Yeah, thirteen people tried to kill themselves, and nine people kill themselves. I want to say in like the past year or something. That's a lot. So they're giving everyone like twenty percent raises to try to raise morale, and made everyone sign packs and vows that they wouldn't kill themselves. Like, okay, everybody, now yeah, that you're here to so work for me. I'm pretty sure that's that guy who's on his last legs is going to look at, oh, you know, I drink this cyanide, but I signed this paper and everything. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Guess I'm going to work tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's about effective as those purity rings. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, 
<laughs> Either way, I just I found it kind of amusing. Not again, not the fact that these people are killing themselves. Yes, I mean that's that's sad, yes. But the fact that, you know, here sign these vows that you're not going to kill yourself because, you know, the guy that's going that obviously that's willing to kill himself, yes. Signing his name on a little piece of paper is really going to make a difference. That's going to change everything. Just like you said. He's going to be sitting there with the gun in his hand. Oh, I signed that piece of paper guess i can't do this but um yeah it's just that same company that we talked about i don't even remember what episode we talked about people there have just uh they've been offing themselves like it's nothing so and they're getting you know obviously a bad rap with it all because why are so many people killing themselves at this place kind of thing keith did you play red dead no i didn't that's i actually i that's what i said i got sherlock holmes instead of red dead redemption okay well i i rented it on saturday I'm about, I've played it last night for about four hours, but I'm actually only about two hours into the, the storyline, so I'll probably play a little bit more uh, tonight or tomorrow. Two hour tutorial? Uh, it's, right now it's a lot of just cinematics, like the first half hour was walk here cinematic, walk here cinematic, um, walk here cinematic, so brace yourself. I'm not a fan of when games do that. Is it annoying, like Final Fantasy annoying? Mm, you could probably do without like the whole the first part you basically start out on a train and you're you're taking a train to like the town that you're starting out in it really doesn't add anything to the story it's just people talking around uh i think the guy's name is john the main character so they're just kind of talking around him just setting up the story it's pretty much nonsense but so far it's i'm not as happy with it as i was and excited for it back in when I played it at PAX for a little bit and saw it, I was really excited, had high expectations for it. But like you were saying about Sherlock Holmes, the I don't know if it's an option that I'm just using the default um, movement options or control sensitivity, but um, they're, they're atrocious. Um, I'm just not that good with uh, the 360 controller and moving around and shooting and stuff. Did you play um, Grand Theft Auto? No, I did not. All right, because I would assume the controls are similar are similar to that. Right, that's what I'm hearing. So uh, for those people that played the Grand Theft Auto games, I'm, I'm sure they'd probably be a little more accustomed to it. Um, but that's the only thing that's kind of holding me back right now is getting accustomed to the controls. But overall, um, they, it's just a basic quest game and pick up quests and go along the main story. But there are so many games, that's kind of why I'm only two hours in besides, you know, redoing some quests, trying to accomplish those. Um, I played a few mini games. They've got, like, uh, you can play Texas Hold'em to earn more money. You can play uh, Horseshoes, which is actually part of an achievement for some outfits. Um, and then the other one is, uh, what they call it? Five finger fillet where you take a knife and you kind of got to stab in a pattern around your hand without stabbing yourself. I used to actually be able to do that. It's actually kind of cool how they they do it, but you basically got to, you know, it's only the A button. You got to type hit or pound the A button in the sequence and when the, the button pops up, otherwise you stab yourself. So needless to say, I, I would be like two fingered Phil. Oh, I do. I do have a, a nice scar on my left pinky. Because actually, I was doing it. But remember when uh, Matt Price came into the house, Bob? Yes, I do. Well, uh, shortly thereafter, I was I was doing the knife thing, and since my hand was messed up because I got in a fight the night before Matt showed up, and then got in a fight when Matt showed up, my hand was all swollen. <laughs> uh, so instead of you know, and then of course, being this, this sweet guy that I am, I said, "Oh, I could just do this with my other hand." Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I put the knife right through my pinky. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So, but I, I mean, I don't know if I could do it anymore. That was one of those things you have to kind of practice at. But uh, I used to be able to do that very well, actually. I wouldn't, I wasn't good enough to where I could, you know, put someone's hand on top of mine. I, I wasn't that comfortable with it. But I, I could go and I would go be going pretty quick with my own hand. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> Yeah, the only other bad thing that I'm noticing about that game is some of the world animations are really choppy, like the scenery and stuff, like mountains in the background. There, you take like five steps, and then all of a sudden you see like a big jump. So it's like 
one frame per five seconds. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna play it more. It doesn't sound like you're enjoying it very much. Uh, like I said, I started playing real late, probably about ten, eleven o'clock last night. Played till about two in the morning. Um, I just got to get more acclimated to the controls. But I knew you were gonna say acclimated. By the way, so you said I just got to get more. I'm thinking he's gonna say acclimated, and then you said acclimated. The nipples are dead on today. It seems that way. Right now, I'd probably say it's probably six, six and a half out of ten. But like I said, I really haven't given it a fair shake just yet. Keep playing it. I know lots of people are very happy with it. Yeah, I was gonna say I heard good things. Yeah, it it's it's a good genre, I think, and it's not the same old, you know, post apocalyptic or you know, modern warfare type of game. So I'm sure I'll enjoy that aspect of the game. Whoa! Ever try to use your mouse upside down? It's f***ed up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wireless and I just grabbed it. I didn't realize I had flipped it upside down. It is really difficult to do anything. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> It's like using it in a mirror. Hmm. Maybe sideways. That'd be fun, too. Huh. I don't have a mouse. All I have is touchpad, so... No. Well, I guess we're just not as cool as you. Ooh, yeah. Touchpad, you know. I know. I, my mouse is sitting upstairs. I'm down here. Oh, touchpad. You know what? Mail. <laughs> well, let's do a couple mail. <laughs> <and then we laughs> can... uh, f*** you, mailbag! <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is from Henry. The music conversation on episode 193 made me respect you guys more than ever. Lamb of God and Meshuggah are totally badass. Some suggestions maybe for Chris more than Bob, but check them out. Job for a cowboy, white chapel, demon hunter, cattle decapitation, born of a spirit. Cattle decapitation is the name of the band? Uh huh. There's also Pig Destroyer. Uh, what other good ones are there? Pig Destroyer? Goat whore. <laughs> Goat. I like this. They got good names rocking here. Uh, side note for Keith, Mashuga is a Swedish band, but their name does in fact meet come from Mashugas, the Yiddish Jewish word for crazy. And thanks to Bob for mentioning Periphery. I looked them up and they're great. Also a couple more bands to check out are Wings of Winds of Plague, Hail the Villain, and Hail the Villain. Keep up the good work. He must really like Hail the Villain. So nice he said it twice? Uh, yeah. No, I said it twice by accident. Oh. oh. Blame me. You must really like Hail the Villain. I guess I do. Let's see here now. Okay, so there's your metal mail. The metal mail. We have a small following of metal people. Uh, this is from Seth. Uh, so I personally think it's Jam, having tried both, but what do you guys, mostly Keith, think is worse chugging, a jar of jam or soy sauce? Ooh. The soy yeah. sauce stung, but it was okay. The jar of jam stung, but then caused projectile vomiting. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to eat all that sugar at once. Oh my uh, god! Uh, I've never, I've never <laughs> drank jam like that. But soy sauce is hard. That that's a hard pill to swallow, right there. I've also never done the super troopers thing where you try to drink an entire bottle of syrup. I would assume that would have repercussions, like trying to eat an entire bottle of jam or jar of jam, whatever container jam comes in. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. But either way, that's um. Hmm. Well, nice try. Yeah, I mean, kudos. <laughs> kudos, dude. That's that's impressive, but... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is from Peter. It's a story about an NFL court case the Supreme Court ruled on. And, uh, well, he, basically, uh, Peter says this article poses a very interesting future for NFL games. I know Keith has been against this for a long time. And if you read the article... Here, I will copy and paste... If you can't see the, is this the um, the trade rights where they're saying the separate team, the teams are separate entities? Exactly. Really? Why do we have to go to the Supreme Court for sports related issues? You're looking at it wrong. It's not a sports related issue. It's a business related issue <clears throat> that just happens to be in the sports industry. But I'm just saying in general, like the whole baseball and steroids and the NFL and steroids and this and that in the Supreme Court. That's a little different than this. This is the actual rights to have. Shouldn't there be like internal self-governing entities or whatever? Yes, except they don't. That's the problem. Oh, they God. sold the entire franchise to what? Was it Adidas or Reebok or one of them? Is that in here? Filed against the league by American Needle. 
Well, that's the people that are suing as American Needle. Oh, Reebok. Reebok. Okay. It was Reebok. <laughs> they basically said, all right, Reebok, you have exclusive rights for the next 10 years to all NFL merchandise. And then the Needle was basically saying, wait, you can't do that. Uh, they're individual entities. And the NFL was basically saying, no, we're not individual entities. We're one organization. And then they were basically uh, citing the individual entities actually bringing in income through sales of items and that kind of thing. And it was, uh, it, it, it's a big antitrust lawsuit. It, I mean, it is going to have lasting repercussions just beyond the fact that American Needle can sell things. It's, uh, so I guess the question is, could this play into the EA sports deal at all? Um, I doubt it because the video game, having a monopoly on the video game is a little different than apparel, but it may play into that, which by the way, I tried backbreakers as well. Oh, that, uh, that's the new football game. Yeah. I tried the demo of it and, um, yeah, I, I couldn't, the controls were so wonky. I have no idea what's going on. I lost, I, I put it on easy. I played a scrimmage and I lost with like negative 30 yards rushing. And it was just, I, <laughs> it's just weird controls. I, uh, I wasn't a big fan. But anyway, it's the, the lawsuit could possibly play into the EA's monopoly. But um, <clears throat> again, that would actually have to be some kind of a video game company would have to bring forth that suit. And even then, that would probably end up getting appealed up to a Supreme Court level as well before that anything would happen with that one as well, I would imagine. There's a lot of money to be made with these things. So, I mean, these companies don't want to give up any kind of monopoly rights. But on the flip side, can't have a monopoly. It's pick your poison. It seems like the NFL was like, okay, looks like Reebok might be struggling. Let's uh, let's sign them to a 10-year exclusive deal so we can keep them around. <laughs> well, I don't know if that was the case. I mean, I'm sure Reebok paid them a hefty fee to do it. And if I was a company and I can get exclusive rights to football, basketball, or baseball, I would. I mean, there's a lot of money to be had in those three sports. I might not necessarily do it unless I was in Canada for hockey, but <laughs> you just scoff. <laughs> well, I mean, there's just, I mean, yes, I know individual towns have big hockey markets, but as a nation, hockey isn't a cash machine. A cash machine. Like soccer isn't a cash machine for the United States. It's just kind of the way it is. We like baseball, football, and basketball. Okay. I think we have enough here if we want to stop. Would anyone like to have any final words for the show? Episode number 196. I bought a car. I'll pick it up on Tuesday. It's a Mazda 6. You can pick up a Mazda 6? You're stronger than you look, dude. Wow, dude. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, I've been working out. I was picking like, you know, one of those AVOs or smart cars. <laughs> I, I couldn't see why you couldn't do that, Keith. Uh, because I couldn't get in one. <laughs> one of those smart cars, those things are so damn tiny, man. Yeah, but you can pick them up and carry them. Yes, I could. So but if you run out of gas, you're fine. That's why they get such good mileage, because you just carry them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we should just go back to riding the horses if it's going to be like, if that's if that's the car we're going to end up with, we're better off just going back to horses. They are so tiny. They are so wee. <laughs> Like, all I can picture is, like, me getting in that thing and just listening to the little engine that could as it strains, yeah, as it strains and strains and strains to move forward. Just sounded like a broken alternator. <laughs> like, that's the and I would just watch the battery drain. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> get out, get out, get out. <laughs> I, I mean, I understand the whole point of the small cars. I just don't understand. There's no practicality to it. Yep, here's a car. You can fit in it. No, you can't bring anything. I'm sorry. You're not allowed. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. But no, you can't have any passengers that, you know, they just don't fit in here either. Small for the sake of small, I'm not for. I'm also, you know, I'm not a huge let's get the most giant car that there possibly could be. Just make a car. I like my car. I fit in it. I'm comfortable. And it goes forward and doesn't go when I'm trying to drive. So I'm all right with that. Yeah, Jill's been making fun of me since yesterday. I got sunburn really bad on my back and shoulders. And there's basically like a line that goes straight down from my armpit to my waist from just red, beet red, pink, 
and then the front half of me is white. Well, how did just the, like the side of you get? Because I was doing yard work, so I guess I had my back to the sun most of the day for like two, three hours. Well, that's what you get for being outside, dude. Yeah, I know. Sun's a little overrated. Little? If it didn't give life to the planet, it would have no purpose. Granted, that's a big, big purpose, but beyond that. <laughs> beyond the whole life-giving qualities of it, I really have no use for it. <laughs> I mean, if we could be sustained off of, like, the moon, yeah, I'll be all for it. Let's just get rid of it. Beyond not making my house an iceberg, <laughs> I really have no f***ing need for this. Yeah, it is funny because it literally is a straight line from my armpit down to my waist that it's white and red. Is it in Hilarious. your armpit? Like, is your armpit sunburned? No, 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 no. But if I, she's like, lift up your arms so she could like see like the line because, you know, sun beating down my back. But yeah, it's funny. Not so cool when you're like turning your head real fast. It feels like a, an Indian rug burn on your neck and shoulders. Yeah, and that's why I just try to stay out of that hellish orb of fire's direct stream of fire. Anybody else watch UFC yesterday? No. <laughs> okay. Who even fought? It was uh, Rampage versus Rashad Evans. Did he win? Rampage did not win. No, oh, Rashad Evans. I'll won. be honest, I'm no, not I surprised. Wanted. I wanted him to win. Oh. oh, really? I wanted Evans to win. Rampage is the one that did. Uh... He's he's Mr. T. Oh, okay. He went some something like 400 and some days without a fight, and then like cut from like 250 to 205. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, I kind of figured he was going to lose just because you're spending all that time doing other stuff and not training to fight and the other guy has been doing nothing but training to fight <laughs> it wasn't is it was it was still a close fight i mean it was like a one or two punch difference cuz rampage had tagged him in the third round and knocked him down but missed with every other like ground and pound hit cuz he just kept squiggling out of the way but if any one of those would have connected, he would have won. Well, at least it was still close. I mean, that's I, I thought he was going to just get his ass kicked. No, 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 no. It went went the distance. It was pretty. It was it was a it was a good fight in the sense that it was evenly matched. I don't think it was that entertaining to watch because Rashad kind of knew what he was going to do, and he kept like backing him up into the fence and frustrating him and shit like that. And it was kind of boring because he didn't actually want to take him to the mat. He just wanted to like wear him out. <laughs> So he'd just like press him up against a thing and kind of, you know, try to hit him while he was up there. But it was really effective, but not that fun to watch. And isn't Lesnar fighting again sometime? Yeah, he's the next one. Doesn't he have two of the belts or something? I mean, no, there's a, there's two heavyweight belts. There's the interim heavyweight championship who's owned by, I don't, I'm not even sure. And then he's got the actual heavyweight champion belt. I gotta say, that's another one that I'm surprised with was him because, you know, he was a wrestler. I just assumed that, you know. You're a wrestler. Everybody assumed he was going to suck, except that he's 265 cut, which is really hard to find. Yeah, he, yeah, he is a monster of a man, <laughs> but but still, you would think. And he was a he was whatever highest ranked wrestler ever, so he's got good ground game and he's fast. Yeah, he he was like a collegiate national, or I don't know about national champion, but he was an all American wrestler he's got like you know the thickest jaw ever and so nobody can knock him out and he pretty much just rushes the guy knocks him down and then suffocates him <laughs> until he loses yeah but i can so respect that fighting style <laughs> i'm uh, just gonna let you hit me and i'm gonna you know get you on the ground so, and yeah you just you. just so f***ing strong it's like yeah i the one guy i think the first fight he had he, the guy got him in a like a, a leg hold yeah I, I saw that yeah. one and he was beating the hell out of the dude, too, and the dude just happened to grab an ankle. Yeah, yeah. And then it was like, oh, I don't care how big you are. You got his ankle. You're done. Remember, kids, if you're fighting a big guy, go for the joints. Go for the joints. Knees and ankles. 